Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello from Stormy's World. This is a beautiful, beautiful Friday morning. And I am coming to you guys to show you some of the progress on my hummingbird butterfly garden. Look at my beautiful fence my husband and my babies have been working on. And all of the posts for my arches are up and ready to go. Um, we're going to have hanging items from the posts and the corners and the fence. But that's the fence to keep all the little critters, including little two-legged ones, out of my garden. My husband and my kids are doing a great job. Don't you guys think so? Um, those are cedar pickets, guys. Um, I love cedar. And my husband asked me did I want to paint them. I told him, no, I don't want to paint them. I want to be able to see the natural knots. So I wanted to stain them. So there we are, guys. My stained cedar fence. Isn't it beautiful? I am uh, one very fortunate woman over here because I get to see a dream come true after living in this place for 23 years this year. I've been through a lot in 23 years. Being diagnosed with lupus has been one of the hardest things I've ever had to deal with in my life. But thanks to Jehovah, I've endured it for 20 years now. Um, this year, since I've been diagnosed. Um, it was in July of 2002 when the doctor told me I had lupus. And I've been enduring it ever since. We've been through a lot of people. But um, I, uh, I really appreciated the AstraZeneca drug trial study that I was on from 2016 through 2019. Because it gave me my life back. And that drug trial study ended very um, sadly at the same time that COVID was breaking out around the United States. Um, in December of 2019 was my last treatment. And they requested that the FDA allow them to have an extension for our drug trial study since there were so many positive results. And we waited and we waited and we waited and we finally got that approval to extend our treatments in February of 2020 when COVID started going rampant. And our drug trial study ended. Um, it was put on the back burner because they were already before the FDA for approval for the drug. So they started concentrating on other more important things, which I understand COVID was pretty important. So my drug was through AstraZeneca and as maybe some of you know, it is now the second newest drug out on the market for lupus and it's called Safnello. I have been waiting for this drug to become available on the market and it came available on the market back last September. Um, I was on a pill treatment at the time through a different dry, trial drug study because they were trying to help me to control my lupus, which was very aggressive. It has now been two and a half years since my last treatment. And Monday morning I go and I get the first treatment in two and a half years of Safnella. Some of you saw my last video, some of you didn't, that I have been in a really bad lupus flare now for some months. 
and it's getting pretty bad um, to the fact that I'm falling. Um, I'm having pains where I haven't had pains in years. I have extreme swelling in all of my extremities. Um, the migraines, the um, restlessness, the uh, insomnia, the low grade fevers to where I feel like I'm having a fever so high I can't control it with the chills in the bed, the nausea, the vomiting, the vertigo, everything that comes along with lupus flares I've been having a lot lately. So this is a very timely, precious blessing that I've gotten from Jehovah because as most people know, a brand new drug on the market is not cheap. So I've been worried about how I was going to afford this drug. And fortunately, my insurance approved it. I got the letter last Saturday morning. And I didn't know what it meant, guys, because I was afraid the copay for the drug was going to be so high I couldn't afford it anyway. So when I got a call from the infusion suite of my rheumatologist office on Monday afternoon, I was shocked. She asked me to please call the pharmacy because they wanted to get my consent to send the medication to my doctor's office so they could infuse it. And the little girl told me, but Miss Lugo, please don't forget to ask them how much your copay is. So that um, you know what it is and pay for it before they send the drug. So I got the lady on the phone and I told her yes, that they have my permission to send the drug directly to my doctor's office. And I was waiting because I figured um, when I asked her about the copay, I couldn't afford it. And I would have to wait longer for them to approve me through the AstraZeneca company for the, the patient assistant to pay for the copay. So I asked the lady and I held my breath until I got the answer. And when she said my copay was zero, I busted out crying praises to Jehovah because I need my life back, guys. I need my health back. And that medication gave it to me. I was very, very sick when I started taking that medication. And the first year, apparently, I was on the placebo drug portion of the test, um, the drug trial study. And I didn't have any results. But whenever my first year ended and I came in for the first infusion of my second year on the drug trial, Wow, I noticed a difference the first weekend. I slept all weekend. So I got up on Monday morning and I called Jeremy, my coordinator for the drug trial. And I asked him, uh, Jeremy, why did this dose affect me so hard? And he told me, well, whether you were on the drug before or not, now you're on the drug. And that's the normal results we've seen in everybody who has apparently been on a real drug. And that started my life improving slowly over the whole year of 2017. By the end of 2017, after Harvey came and went in our first snow the first week of December that year, um, I started showing signs of neuropathy on the right side of my body, which was the one that was paralyzed during my stroke in 2005. So I went into the doctor's office and I struggled that whole winter, having to walk with the cane, falling and everything. But the longer I was on that drug, I got stronger and stronger and 
I was as close to coming in a remission as I could possibly have gotten. When it ended in 2019, um, 2020 was hard. because of the fact that I was in the full-time ministry work. I ran my office full-time and I did things with my family. I have two very active teenagers. So as everybody out there knows, it's not easy raising teenagers when you can't get out and keep up with them. But I've been very fortunate my two teens take care of mama. They've been really great about not complaining too much when we can't go here or can't go there because of my health. And I really appreciate my kids very, very much. My husband and my kids have gotten used to over the last probably decade of not making too many plans to go anywhere and do anything with me because I never know when I'm gonna be able to. Um, so it's just been like that a lot lately this last year. And my kids and my husband decided to help me make this little garden spot because if I was gonna continue to get sick, I wanted my happy place before I got any sicker. Um, this means a lot to me. My mom had a beautiful flower garden in her yard and she always had hummingbirds in her yard. My mom loved hummingbirds and as you can see, the little wind chime over there, I had given to my mom to hang in her flower garden. And this October will be 28 years my mom's been gone. Um, the weeping willow, guys, was my mom's favorite tree. She always wanted one, but she said it wouldn't grow in her yard because it wasn't wet enough. But I planted this one in the spring of 2006. So my little weeping willow, guys, this started as a 14 foot stick in the ground is now a very full-blown weeping willow, as you can see. It's beautiful, and it's tall. Um, it's very, very tall. Um, and it has survived Hurricane Ike, Hurricane Rita, Hurricane Harvey, and many more that have come through our area. And I have lovely birds, as you've been able to hear in the background of this video. And you've seen a couple fly across in front of us, the Cardinals. Um, I love my little property here. It's not much. Very humble abode. Um, my daddy used to tell me I was the richest poor kid he ever knew. Because I had a heart of gold and I wanted to share it with the world. That even if I married the richest guy in the world, I'd never act rich other than to give all my money away to those who needed it. I'll never forget that. Um, 
I've always been a person to give from my heart, especially to those in need. And this is a start, guys, if I can do this garden and I can attract more hummingbirds and bees back this year and other birds and butterflies. Maybe I can help give back to our little environment. Um, this project started about a month ago and it's been kind of slow going trying to figure out where I wanted to put it. It wasn't supposed to be quite so big as this, guys. Um, but my husband and my kids are really trying to please me. And I think my husband is doing this because he's scared that without this treatment, I might not be here much longer. Um, we've personally known a couple of people who have died from lupus over the last couple of years. Um, one was an aunt by marriage and I've had a couple of cousins on my father's side who have died since we've been married with lupus and other ailments. Um, I've known a lot of people in my advocacy groups who have passed away from lupus. A lot of them were a lot younger than me, so I'm very fortunate that I'm still here. And I thank Jehovah every day for my little life whatever it may be, and I beg him to let me be an encouragement to others on a daily basis. Um, many of you might not know, but I am a Jehovah's Witness, and I am a full-time minister. I give free Bible studies to anyone who is interested in them. And whenever COVID hit, um, I was very active. I was going to the nursing homes on Saturdays, giving Bible studies there with my children and other sisters and brothers from our congregation and from two other congregations from our hall. We really enjoyed that time with the elderly. And when COVID hit, we had to stop going to the nursing homes. And it was very devastating for me because I also did public ministry service um, at a public ministry cart, which um, we had literature and we would go and we would sit at a post office and allow people to come up and pick up literature off of our cart. And I really enjoyed my ministry. Um, It's not every day that you get to listen to somebody and maybe give them a scripture that can bring them some comfort and give them some hope. But I got to, and I got to do that on a daily basis. So that meant the world to me, my ministry. And when I got sick, after COVID broke out, um, It took a little bit out of me and I haven't been able to get into my field ministry like I used to every day on a daily basis. But I know that with this treatment, I'll be back to my normal schedules again very soon. So I just wanted to share that beautiful blessing that I've been given and let everybody know that I spent a whole day in the clinics yesterday getting blood work, getting um, chest x-rays so that I can start this treatment on Monday. Um, I also went to go see my regular doctor because I had some pains in my chest and, and rib cage and back and she got to rule out um, problems from water on my heart. And she thinks that it's a fibromyalgia issue, possibly a bruised or torn muscle in my rib cage from my back. 
due to a fall that I had on the first of this month. I was working doing taxes at my desk and I went to get up and I lost my balance and I sat back down to keep from falling and I fell anyways with the chair wrapped around my hips and I fell on my right side. So she was glad that I got the x-rays yesterday because that can help them also rule out any fractured ribs. So I am definitely very grateful for everything that I've been given. So this is the update on my garden and the update on my treatments, guys. And this is also proof that you can enjoy life even if you're dealing with a serious illness. You just have to find for what gave you joy before. And sometimes just go for it because if you don't, your joy will always stay outside of your grasp. And here it is, guys. My joy is becoming a reality. I have some beautiful vines, some beautiful seeds, some beautiful things that I'm going to be planting. And the lattice is going to go on the back side of my fence over there. And I have bougainvillea and I've got uh, mandevilla that I'm going to plant. I've got honeysuckle seeds I'm fixing to be planting. And all of my little things are going to come up. I'm going to have one corner for my gardenias. I mean my, I'm sorry, hydrangeas. And I'm going to have one corner for wild seeds. Just different kinds of wildflowers I'm going to put down in one corner of my um, garden. And then there's going to be, it's going to be a progress. It's going to be a work in progress over the next year of planning these things that are going to be annual and uh, spicing it up with some perennials here and there. I'm going to plant some tulips. I'm going to plant some glads. I'm going to plant some irises. So you guys keep an eye out because I'm going to do some more videos really soon as we start filling this place up with flowers. Um, the front end is going to look like the back end as you can tell there's like some posts right there in the center the two posts with the um, cedar planks on the outside or for my arch across the gateway the two in the center those two posts in the front and the center with a little post at the bottom is my gate entryway into my little garden space so that's gonna be my little world and I can keep children out of it and dogs out of it and be able to have a beautiful garden for my birds and my bees and my butterflies to come and live in so you guys um, take care today um, if you have family members out there please hug them and tell them that you love them because you never know when they're not going to be here tomorrow there's so much violence and um, illness out there that you never know from day to day what's going to happen. Um, you guys, stay positive because positivity can increase your happiness, your joy, your life. So this is it for me today, guys. Um, this morning, I'm going to post this video. And then maybe this afternoon, I'll be able to post something else. But look at those lilies, guys. Aren't those beautiful? I've been watering every day, and they're just gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And then here's some of my plants. Um, my hydrangeas were in full bloom, so I have to take the blooms off that were there when I first bought them. So they'll rebloom. I have my hibiscus that are in full bloom, my gardenia, my roses. And as you can see, I have everything else out here. Hello, my pretty babies. Hello, my daddy. Hello, my chico. Where are you guys coming from, huh? Good morning, guys. So for now, guys, I will let you go and I will see you soon.
Thanks for coming to Stormy's World today.